Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're back for the sixth retrospect review and we are taking a look at Ninjago Season 5, Possession. So as usual, I will be going through the set, the, ep the episodes, the villains and characters, and the plot of the season. And yeah, so let's get started. The first episode was Winds of Change, which I think was really a fun season premiere to watch as it had two major fights, the fight between Moro and Lloyd and the fight between Moro and the Ninja. And it kind of went by fast and it was nice to see the Ninja team back and Lloyd dealing with his emotions after Garmadon's supposed death. Well, not really death, but, you know, banishment. Anyways, the next episode is Ghost Story, which is also a very emotional episode as we got to see the main draw of this episode. The main highlight was definitely Moro's backstory, at least for me. And we got to see some of the ghosts as the ninja did fight Wraith. The next episode was Sticks and Stones, which introduced the character of Ronin, as well as the city of Sticks, which would later become a major site in the season. And I thought this episode was pretty cool, because this was what, this was where action really started to get, you know, this is where the plot started to unfold as Air Jitsu became, you know, a thing. Air Jitsu more learns Air, Air Jitsu in this episode. And there was a pretty big fight between the ninja and the ghosts. And the next episode, the next episode was the Temple on Haunted Hill, which is also an extremely emotional episode and a major plot point. What I loved about this was how this episode kind of foreshadowed Yang's role in the future. They kind of introduced this character, but they didn't do anything with them until later in Day of the Departed. And this episode was really cool. Nia and Ronan did go to Samurai X Cape and fight the ghosts, and I thought that was a cool, you know, subplot as well, even though it was a subplot. But, you know, the Cole becoming a ghost was very emotional. Next episode was Peekaboo. I really love the, you know, kind of climbing up the mountain aspect of this episode. It was a very fun episode to watch, and I love the fight scenes. And it was nice to see the ninja come on top for once, you know, after they have already suffered a lot in this season. Next episode was with Kingdom Come, and this is cool because we got to see the Cloud Kingdom. And I love the ninja getting betrayed in this episode. I thought that was very cool. As well as some of the fights that went down. And, yeah, the ninja actually come out on top for this fight. And then the next episode after that was The Crooked Path, which is one of the slowest episodes, if not the slowest episode in the season, but I still love this episode. It was cool to see Ronan betray the ninja, but then realize he had made the wrong choice, only for it to be too late, and then he gets captured. I thought that whole thing was very cool, and a pretty cool subplot element, as well as the relationship between Nia and Ronan, and, you know, how Nia had gotten to trust Ronan, but then he betrayed that. It was cool to see Moro in his ghost form, and I thought Moro was very cool in this episode, and it was really cool to see the ninja actually discover Moro's remains and how he died. And that was really creepy, that was really dark. And at the end of the episode, Ronin does the right thing and saves the ninja. Next episode was Grave Danger, which is pretty much the climax of the season. One of the bi big climaxes of the season, where the final showdown with Moro for the Realm Crystal, and they fail, but in the end they get Lloyd back. It was very cool to see the first Binjutsu Master's tomb in this season. And then in this episode. And then after that, Curse World Part 1 and Part 2. Both of these episodes were phenomenal. I loved the whole two-part episode thing. And, of course, Curse World Part 2 had a lot going on, such as Nia's true potential, Moro's death, Garmadon's final, Garmadon's final cameo, and a lot more, including Lloyd's setup for a future role as a sensei. Overall, the episodes were amazing. And looking back on it, yeah, so the main villain of this season was Moro. People argue that it's the preeminent, but it's definitely Moro for a wide variety of reasons, such as that he has his own theme music and he has an actual character he was in the whole season. Moro was such an amazing villain. He was truly a villain of emotion, which was definitely one of, of a first for the season. I loved his backstory and I thought it was really original. The focus character. People tend to say that Nia is the focus character, but I disagree and I think Lloyd is the focus character of this season. Nia have, getting her powers was definitely a subplot and that was the secondary thing. Lloyd fighting his possession with Moro and, you know, Moro and Lloyd. That was definitely the main plot of the season. The end episode is definitely has a lot of emphasis on Lloyd as he fights Moro and he sees his father for the last time and he becomes his role is set up as a future sensei. I would definitely say that this is Lloyd's season as opposed to Nia's. Nia is just there as a secondary element. And speaking of which, I think it was definitely necessary that Nia became a ninja. She finally has something more to do in the season and more in the series and more of a purpose. And I thought that was very cool to actually have Nia become a ninja for once. Some of the vehicles in this season were also very nicely designed, and I loved the way that some of the older vehicles returned for this season in the form of mechs, and I thought that was very cool. Now, in the end, the sets of this wave were also phenomenal too. One of the best waves by far. There were some really cool ghost sets, such as the Ghost Dragon, and the new Destiny's Bounty, 
And, of course, the Temple of Air Jitsu, which is my all-time favorite Ninjago set. The plot of the season was pretty good. It had a lot of, you know, questing going on and a lot of piecing the puzzle together. And I thought that was very cool for a Ninjago season, even though we do really see that a lot in Ninjago. But this season was kind of different since there was a lot of, you know, figuring out stuff and a lot of that. And in the end, I love the ending of the season, although it was a bit unrealistic that the preeminent just got defeated like that. The preeminent was very cool. I think this season definitely built on the Cursed Realm and the idea of the Cursed Realm and Garmadon's death. And that is why it goes hand in hand with season four. In the end, I would have to give this season a solid eight out of ten. Very good season. It had a lot going on and it did it all perfectly. It was darker and it was definitely a new age for Ninjago. So yeah, that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone ever you know. What do you guys think? What would you guys think about Possession? Be sure to leave a comment in the comment sections below, giving a rating of Possession and telling me, you know, why you liked it. So yeah, that is all for this retrospective review. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.